Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a look at the King's Gambit. After e4, e5, f4 begins the King's Gambit. Uh, e takes f4, uh, begins the King's Gambit accepted. We're going to play knight f3, the King's Knight's variation. And then, of course, uh, the subject of today's video is going to be about how to face the modern defense, uh, which is the move pawn to d5. So if you like content like this and want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So the concept behind d5, this modern defense, is to basically hold this shield pawn on the f4 square. So d5 essentially forces white to play e captures d5. And then the idea is that at some point black wants to simply play bishop d6 and batten down the hatches on this shield pawn on f4, which should shield his king from any attacks along the f file. Now in this particular case, if black plays bishop to d6 right away, we shouldn't really have a whole lot to worry about as white, even though he is holding the shield pawn and this should prevent attacks down the f file. He hasn't captured this pawn on d5 yet, and as a matter of fact, we can probably hang on to it, and this will probably cause him some problems in the future. So what you should do here is just play something like d4, uh, knight to f6, and then play c4, and simply hang on to that pawn. And then after castles, just develop bishop e2, rook e8, just castle. And we are actually following a game here. This is Salmansu versus Yurtov, played in Russia back in 1998. And that game continued bishop to g4, king to h1, Knight to h5, and then c5, utilizing those mobile those mobile pawns. The bishop has to retreat, bishop to f8, and then we're simply going to play knight to c3. Notice how black is just continually trying to hold that shield pawn, either with his knight on h5 or his bishop on d6. So we're still trying to gang up on that shield pawn, and we're still trying to take it. Hence, after black's next move, knight to d7, white plays the move knight to g1, which simultaneously threatens the bishop on g4, and simply threatens to capture that pawn on f4 by playing bishop takes f4. Black plays queen to h4 in this game, which was actually kind of clever. Uh, if white were to play the question mark move, the actually double question mark move, triple question mark, if we can add three question marks, uh, bishop takes g4, pause the video, see if you can find it, knight g3 would be checkmate, and that would end the game. So of course bishop g4 is bad, but that wasn't the reason that knight g1 got played in the first place. The reason was simply to play bishop takes f4, uh, so that we could get that shield pawn out of the way and just declare an advantage because we have a pawn in the middle of the board. So after bishop e2, knight on g to e2, we've effectively consolidated our pawn. There is no mate threat anymore. The g3 square is sufficiently covered. The f file is open and we have an extra pawn on d5. This position is simply advantage white and white did eventually go on to win. That was Samansu versus Yurtov played in Russia back in 1998. So the immediate bishop d6 to hold the shield pawn, even though it's kind of principled and it's in the spirit of the modern variation to do something like this, isn't really smart. Really what black needs to do is black needs to get that pawn back right away. Now, generally speaking, black tries to get that pawn back by playing knight f6. They don't like playing queen d5 because, of course, if you play queen d5, you're getting that queen immediately attacked with tempo with knight c3 followed by d4 and who wants to get attacked with tempo. So most people will play knight to f6. And now we hit kind of this interesting moment where we have to decide between bishop to c4, just kind of hanging on to the pawn, uh, bishop to b5 check, uh, which is another interesting approach, and, of course, uh, just holding the pawn. Uh, pawn to c4. So let's take a look at each one of these ideas kind of in turn. So the first idea that I was ever exposed to uh, was bishop to c4, and then people are going to play uh, knight takes d5. So they're going to take the pawn anyway, but they're going to take it with the knight. So after they take the pawn with the knight, we need to castle. They're going to play bishop e6, uh, bishop b3, and uh, we're actually following a couple of different games right here. Uh, we're following one uh, Nakamura game. We're following Nakamura versus Adams, played back in London in 2011. And we're following some other games as well. Now what's interesting is Nakamura is probably the one that went down the wrong path. Uh, C5 uh, got played in the Nakamura versus Adams game played in London back in 2011, and Nakamura played king to h1 to get his king out of the way before he started engaging in action in the middle of the board. And at least according to the engine, it was probably better to just engage in action in the middle of the board right away and play pawn to d4, and then after cd4, knight d4, bishop c5, creating this pin, now play king h1 because we've gotten in that precious d4 move that we needed to get in. And now after bishop takes d4, queen d4, castles, bishop f4, white should be about equal. 
And uh, there were two games uh, that I found that went down this path. Uh, one white one and one black one. Both were equal and both of the results were kind of questionable overall. Uh, but uh, knight c6 got played in one, queen f2, knight takes f4, queen takes f4, knight d4, and knight c3. And actually got played in both games. And uh, this position is just dead equality. There's just absolutely nothing here. Uh, the position is open. Uh, there's a 3-2 to two majority on the queen side, but the king side is anchored. There's no attack. There's really nothing here for either side. So this position should just be completely equal. It's interesting that if you put it on the engine, the engine sort of likes black maybe a little better, but it's not sure. But but it's 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 pretty much close to all zeros. So this is a pretty equal position. And that's actually the way to go. Uh, you end up in a little bit more trouble if you play Nakamura's move, which was King H1, or at least he ended up in trouble when he played against Adams, even though Nakamura did go on to win. Uh, after King H1, Knight to C6, Pawn to D4, C4, Nakamura made the mistake of playing Bishop A4. And apparently this position is already a uh, major advantage black just after bishop to d6, battening down the hatches on that f4 pawn. And that bishop on a4 is really uncomfortable. Uh, like I said, Nakamura did go on to win, so there were some further mistakes from Adams. But at this point, black probably has a major advantage already. And if Nakamura had played bishop takes c4, this would have been a little bit better. But it's understandable why he didn't want to do it, because it looks like you kind of have to give up an exchange here. After knight to e3, bishop e3, and then bishop to c4, the best move objectively is bishop to g1, giving up that exchange on the f1 square. Bishop takes f1, queen takes f1 is probably unclear, but white is down an exchange. So that's something that you might not have wanted to let happen. So probably it was just advisable for Nakamura to play uh, d4, and then unfortunately there's just nothing very special here. This position is probably just equal. So that kind of leads to these other couple of ideas. Like instead of bishop c4, which is sort of having some problems right now, uh, these other two ideas are maybe more interesting. We have this bishop b5 check, which got played by Ian Natomache, uh, I think uh, a few times. And uh, he got some pretty good results with bishop to b5 check, and even going over it with the engine, I can't find anything particularly wrong with any of the moves that Napomniche made, nor can I find anything horribly wrong with the way black played, and Napomniche did manage to win a couple of games with this, with the white pieces, so we have to take this seriously. Uh, after bishop to b5 check, uh, pawn to c6, d c6, knight c6, the idea is just knight c3. Uh, we have bishop d6, and... Uh, it is actually kind of a critical thing. You can reach a very similar position out of the Falkbeer counter gambit move order, uh, where they play c6, and that position is clearly advantage black because the knight is not on the f6 square. It's a very beneficial thing that this knight is on f6. It makes it harder for black to hold the uh, f4 square, and maybe more importantly, it opens up black to this check, a queen e2 check. We can throw this in. Uh, the knight being on e7 would, of course, completely prevent this tempo gain. And now we have uh, two games and two different moves. Uh, Nepomniche was white in both cases. We have Nepomniche versus uh, Lango, uh, which continued with uh, bishop e6. And we have Nepomniche versus Sirgov played in Poland in 2021 uh, that continued with uh, king to f8. So in the Sirgov game, after king to f8, we have bishop takes c6, bc6, pawn to b3, which is apparently the best move. Bishop f5 is a question mark move. And after b3, the computer's kind of on the fence. It's thinking the position's somewhere around equal, but maybe already white's getting better here somehow. And then uh, we have bishop f5, bishop b2 is advantage white. So bishop to b2, queen to e8, castle's queen side, queen e2, knight e2. And uh, this position is simply advantage white. Uh, we're going to be creating all kinds of problems. We have a problem on the f6 square. Eventually, we're going to try to be getting this pawn back. And uh, overall... Black's position is just very difficult to play, and White did eventually go on to win. That was Nepomniche versus Sirgov played in Poland back in 2021. The other way that Black could have gone with this is apparently blocking bishop e6 as possible. But then, of course, knight d4 uh, got played. This was Nepomniche versus Lango played in Moscow back in 2021. Knight to d4, queen to d7. We had knight to e6, fe6, and then pawn to d4. Castles, bishop d2, a6 bishop c6, bc6, castles queenside, and of course, 
white is doing just fine here. He's managed to mess up black's pawns, and he has plenty of play for whatever is going on here. And eventually white did go on to win, so that was Napomniche versus Lango. So bishop b5 check is actually a very reasonable uh, move against uh, knight f6, and it's one of my two recommendations. My other one being the possibility of simply playing pawn to c4, uh, which was played by uh, none other than uh, Magnus Carlsen, uh, who managed to win a game against Chadov back in Astana back in 2012. And uh, I have another game here. I have uh, Kilski versus Karpus uh, played back in Poland back in 2018. Uh, so, so what's interesting is uh, Kilski actually played a little bit better. Uh, Carlson made sort of a questionable move here. But c4 is interesting. We hold the pawn. It's a temporary hold. So we play pawn to c4, and then after c6, we don't take on c6. We just play d4. And then after cd5, we intend to c5. So those of you that play like the panov botfinic attack and stuff like that, this is a very similar pawn structure kind of idea. We've generated kind of an artificial sort of three on two over here. Uh, we have this three on two because this pawn has gone past the d pawn, and now we have a pawn majority down the road, so we can potentially create a pass pawn. And we've also generated a little bit more space. On top of that, there is just this threat of bishop takes f4, getting rid of this thorn pawn, and uh, life is going to be good. Once that f4 pawn, that shield pawn disappears, White's position should be quite nice. So in the Carlson game and in this other game, we have knight c6, and then Magnus Carlson plays this sort of principled bishop b5. Uh, but uh, the funny story is it allows uh, queen e7 check, which is good. Uh, he got lucky. His opponent played bishop e7, and of course Carlson's position is great after this. Uh, but queen e7 check was apparently a possibility here. Uh, queen e7 check could have gotten played, and this would have been an uncomfortable situation for white, as it turns out. But uh, instead of bishop b5, white should have just played bishop captures f4, and then of course everything is okay. So bishop takes f4, and then queen e7 check uh, isn't nearly as strong. I mean, we can just, you know, play bishop e2, and there's not a problem. Everything is fine. So Bishop takes f4 got played in this game. Kilski versus uh, Karpus played in Poland back in 2018. That game continued knight to e4. We had knight to c3, uh, pawn to g5. Knight takes e4, takes on f4, knight back to c3, uh, bishop to g4, uh, now bishop to b5. And white should have some sort of advantage here. And in fact, white did go on to win. So this is uh, another possibility, and if we play the c4 line, I really feel like uh, this is the path that we need to go down. So basically, to review uh, what we do uh, when we face the modern variation is, of course, after um, you know e takes uh, d5, uh, if they shield the pawn with uh, bishop d6 and they protect their shield pawn, we just develop naturally, but hang on to that pawn on the d5 square, and white should have an advantage simply by hanging on to this extra pawn. If they play uh, the move queen takes d5, uh, they are going to feel very uncomfortable very quickly uh, because we are going to end up hitting this queen with the knight and gaining a tempo against that queen. And then we're going to be playing all of our normal moves to recoup our shield pawn, and life should be good for white after that. If they play knight f6, which is by far in the way the most common move, it's the move recommended by the engine, it's the move recommended by the theory, I would say... Uh, don't go for the older bishop c4, as those lines aren't looking very promising, and at best, maybe you're just equal if you play the theory correctly. I would instead go for either bishop to b5, uh, which Napomniche played twice with success, uh, which seems like a good idea, or I would just hold the pawn uh, with pawn to c4 with the idea of allowing them to capture the pawn on d5, getting that three on two pawn majority, and then of course capturing this pawn on f4 at your earliest possible convenience. So if they play knight c6, just the immediate bishop takes f4 captures should leave you with a really reasonable game. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.